In this video, I'm going to discuss the basics or the philosophy of reservoir operations. And I wanted to start out with a discussion of the controlled and the uncontrolled area. In this slide, what you see is this gray shaded area. And this gray shaded area represents the controlled area for a particular reservoir. All the controlled area means is that any rain that falls in this gray shaded area that becomes runoff is going to run off to the reservoir that is formed by the dam. So it does give you some level of control over that inflow. To see the interaction between the controlled and the uncontrolled areas, it's probably best to switch over from that plan view and over to a profile view. So an uncontrolled area means that it just falls um, in, a, in an area where you have no control over it by the dam, right? So it'd be in the downstream areas um, that are below the dam. Now, dams that have a flood control mission are protecting something downstream. And it, it, a variety of things can be pr protected. Um, one is that you could have some protection for downstream transportation routes. So if you have a big flood that's occurring downstream, you can then capture some of that that inflow that's coming in from the controlled areas and hopefully be able to keep the transportation routes open for a longer period of time. You may also be protecting some rural or agricultural areas um, along with providing some protection to the urban areas and the focus of your protection can change as the event gets worse. Uh, so for instance maybe you are protecting agricultural areas when you have a low amount of flood storage in use, but as you get more flood storage in use, maybe then your focus will then switch over to the urban areas. Now typically you'll be looking at a downstream point uh, in order to help make the determination on what you'll be releasing from the dam. And in this case, um, you can see that we've highlighted the Horatio gauge downstream. You know, a very simple philosophy in uh, the operation of a lot of reservoirs is that um, you don't want to make the peaks downstream worse than what would have occurred had the dam not been in place. So how would you go about doing this? Let's say that you had a event or an event that's occurring in the upstream areas. Um, if that's the case, then on the controlled areas, if that's the case, then um, in order to make sure that I'm not making the peak worse than what would have occurred had the dam not been in place, I can just make sure that the ordinates on my outflow hydrograph shown by this dash line are less than the ordinates on my inflow hydrograph until the inflow hydrograph peaks. On the recession limb, I'll eventually cross over to where my outflow is greater than my inflow, and that's necessary in order to empty any stored floodwaters um, that you're storing in the reservoir. If I have water that's stored in the reservoir and now I'm getting an event that's occurring downstream, again, I can make sure that my peak at my downstream points of interest is not going to be greater than what would have occurred had the dam not been in place if I make my releases after that downstream um, uh, uncontrolled peak um, has, has reached its peak and it's on its recession limb. So here you can see I have a solid line and this is the hydrograph from the uncontrolled area. And you can see that it splits from the total hydrograph when the hydrograph from the uncontrolled area is on the recession limb. So the difference between these two is just going to be the releases from the dam. So if the releases from the dam uh, start to have an impact after I've peaked downstream, then I know that I'm not making it any worse than uh, what would have occurred had the dam not been in place in the downstream areas. Now you might be wondering, well, what happens if you have this occurring both upstream and downstream? Well, it gets a little bit more complicated, but in that case, you could look at what's happened upstream and also what's happened downstream, and then pick the worst case or pick the worst of those two, and then have that be what governs what your releases are going to be. Now, in reality, that's somewhat of an oversimplification because if I want to make uh, certain that I'm not making any worse than what would have occurred had the dam not been in place, then I could compute the unregulated or the no dam conditions in real time and then make those determinations to make sure that I'm not making it any worse. There are a couple of problems though with operating this way. It's important to understand that that's the philosophy, but some of the problems if you were to strictly operate that way would be that 
Um, number one, it, it can be somewhat complicated to make that determination. And probably more importantly is that it's then up to the real-time reservoir operator to make the determination on how much benefit they want to provide for each individual event. It's better to have the stakeholders come to an agreement about what level of protection they want and then uh, perform the analysis to show what those trade-offs would be. And that's why you'll typically use a downstream regulating stage or um, a flow that corresponds to a downstream regulating stage. And in this case, uh, the Horatio gauge would be used as the downstream regulating stage. So if I have uh, stored floodwaters and I want to get rid of it, if I'm above the allowable stage, it means that I have to hold on to that water. Now, I might be subjected to a minimum release, but just as long as I have flood storage remaining, I have to hold on to that water until it drops back down to um, the allowable stage. And at that point, I'll be able to release. If I'm below that allowable stage, then I'm able to make enough of a release to take it up to that allowable stage and empty flood waters that way. So hopefully from that, you have a better understanding of the basics of reservoir operations. And also you have a better understanding of why it is that water can be stored in the flood pool temporarily. And um, hopefully also it's understood that if I have enough flooding that's occurring downstream while also having um, significant inflows coming in from upstream, I can completely fill up my flood storage and get to the top of the flood pool where a, a different set of operations would, would then occur. Um, I'll be going into that those type of operations in follow-up videos, so feel free to subscribe to the channel if you're interested in getting more information about this. Thanks for watching this video.